Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> hi everyone. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting. Um, I think just nice. Some other guys just just streamed in as well. Um, thanks so much for coming for our talk. Uh, this talk really is going to guide you through, um, you know, a little bit about web accessibility, um, what it is, how you can get started. Um, you need zero experience um, coming in here to to learn about it. Um, so. Just to introduce uh, the team a little bit, uh, there are the five of us that started this web and mobile accessibility initiative in Singapore uh, because we identified that uh, web and mobile accessibility was very lacking, not just in Singapore, but I think in the region, uh, and we needed to do something about it. So um, the five of us put, uh, put together um, to essentially learn more about web accessibility from Gyang and Dixon, the first two on the left. <clears throat> um, so they are both um, people with visual impairment, so as users, but they're also developers. So uh, they've been, you know, um, interfacing with web and mobile accessibility their entire lives. So they, they teach us a lot about it. So um, I think over the past uh, four to five months, we've actually come up with some sort of a curriculum um, as to which we can invite more devs to kind of learn about web accessibility, you know, be it on a fortnightly basis or whatsoever, um, you know, looking at the different steps on how, as a collective, those that want to join us can go out uh, to the different regional companies with their websites and mobile apps to make them accessible. So um, the agenda for today's workshop really is in three parts. Uh, the first part is uh, just me nagging a little bit. So this is the part you can doze off. Um, and then uh, section two will be the user's perspective, how a person with a visual impairment kind of interfaces with a website. And then um, we also do a screen reader walkthrough where step by step we will go through a website together with a screen reader. And then we'll, we will also give you a, 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 a challenge later where you will have to blank out your screen uh, so you can't see your screen at all and then interface like, as though you were someone who's blind um, to... Uh, find, retrieve some information on a website. <clears throat> so then section three, we'll talk about a uh, developer's perspective. Um, what do you actually need to do if you're, if you're practicing web accessibility in order to uh, reach a high standard um, of uh, web accessibility? La. So essentially the focus for us for this session, I think is focused more towards web accessibility and less towards mobile accessibility. Um, I think because of the nature of the conference, but also for us, uh, a lot of the information that is, um, you know, on the internet is still on websites. And a lot of the information that is necessary for daily living, think of banking, think of transportation, travel, if they are not accessible, then people with visual impairment cannot um, access those services. In an age where everything is, is, you know, being digitized and going O to O. Yeah. So, um, the, the first part, what really is um, uh, A11Y? So, we use this term quite a lot, A11Y. Um, and why is it important? So, essentially, A11Y is a numeral name for accessibility. So, um, the reason why they came up with such a term was because blind people use Twitter as well. They want to fit everything in 140 characters. So um, that's why they, they came up with this uh, little shortcut as well, <clears throat> right? And why is it important is because I think traditionally about 70% of the information that we process as humans is through sight, right? If, if you kind of reflect on the last 30 different websites that you've, you've interfaced, you could have done it without any sound, right? With just visuals, you're able to interface with the website really well. Um, but what happens if, you know, you can hear it, but you can't see it? Um, think of maybe the top three websites that you visit on a daily basis, how you interface with them, what kind of structures do they have? Um, that's what I think people with visual impairment face. Um, <clears throat> and this is not so much a, uh, a point to make you feel like a bit sad that, you know, they don't have access or whatsoever, but to show you that there's actually a different way uh, a, a more uh, a refreshing take 
on how you can kind of you know assess the structure of your website or different websites uh, that might even improve um, the way you look at things in 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 the the products that you build lah. Okay, so <clears throat> just a little bit of a background here um, on how people with visual impairment or those who are blind use computers. There are two main ways. The one on the right is, uh, I can't really capture the audio, but he's using a screen reader. So um, what a screen reader is, is everything that is uh, displayed on your screen, um, you can actually hear it out. So it's, that's how it's, it's, uh, it works, right? And, you know, now I think we're also transitioning into a phase where because we have a lot to do with voice UI, so um, we definitely can uh, interface with you know, the internet in many different ways. But on the left, we still have what we call a refreshable braille display. So they take line by line of text that you get on websites or Word documents or whatsoever, and it uh, processes it to um, you know, display little dots that uh, are braille. And the reason why um, they would still use braille in this day and age and not just everything through audio is because they want to look towards uh, having good grammar and punctuation something that um, you know audio just can't do at the moment so that's currently the two ways that um, uh, people with visual impairment interface um, what, what I like to say about braille is it's like how my mom forced me to learn Chinese even though I don't want to so uh, Parents who are blind, uh, who have blind kids or so, they want their kids to learn Braille because it helps them with their education on that aspect as well. Yeah. So, the next question is, um, who does accessibility, right? a one one y So, I think on a global scale, um, if you look towards the West, there have been a lot of uh, developments in, you know, the, the past decades. One example I'll give you is in the EU. Um, this was fairly recent. Uh, early last year, the EU um, had a legislative, legislative mandate to say, okay, all the websites of governmental services need to be web accessible. And um, after that, essentially they said, um, since uh, it was a great success, let's make all the mobile apps of governmental services web accessible. Ah, sorry, mobile accessible, right? Um, so the EU is, is working towards that. In the US, it's also a, a very interesting case whereby for the past 27 years, they have this thing called the American Disability Act. And what happens is if you are a person with a disability and uh, a particular company um, you know, is not accessible to you, you can actually partner up with a lawyer to sue the company and they can't counter sue, they have to comply. So this one example about three, three months ago, is it? What's the date there? I can't see. October. Yep. Um, so people with visual impairment actually sued Match.com because they said that we want to find love as well. So we value your service and we want it to be made accessible. Right? Um, so this is the story also of how when we've spoken to you know, places like Airbnb and the rest, they start their accessibility journey because they get sued. Um, So there actually also is a global community of um, web accessibility experts, mainly all the accessibility engineers from all the large tech companies you can think of uh, are all there. And when I joined this, I think one of the, the things that really um, stood out for me was I was trying to find other people in Southeast Asia that were on this chat and I couldn't find anyone, right? I saw a private Slack channel, A11Y-SEA, and I thought it was Southeast Asia, but it was Seattle, right? So there really was no one from ASEAN. <clears throat> so um, let me jump back to this point first. So to talk about ASEAN, I think um, the examples I gave you of the EU and in the US, those were essentially um, legislative mandates. The government has enforced it down. Um, and I don't think we expect to see that happening in Southeast Asia in the next 10 years. Uh, because we are very pro-business. Maybe in places like, um, I think Korea and Japan are starting to, at the moment, to have a little bit more legislative mandates. So, um, the, the responsibility lies with the community to ensure that there is uh, web accessibility. Um, so then I think there's, there's, there's a stronger um, 
community aspect of this if we want to do this together for the ASEAN region. So uh, the question is, you know, uh, you guys probably work in different companies with different, um, you know, products. Um, are they, you know, web, uh, web accessible? And what does it take to actually make it web accessible, right? So a very, very short answer, we'll dive deeper later, is that it's not very much different from your daily grind. It does not take a lot of extra effort for you to, to be web accessible. <coughs> Sorry. So um, one of the main things is just, you know, you need proper labeling, indexing um, of all the different web, web elements that you have uh, on your product. And, you know, to constantly review if a screen reader, um, that's what we call uh, manual scanning. La. There's also an automated scanner also um, to check for accessibility. So that's on a user needs basis. And then there's actually a global standard for web accessibility as well that we look towards for compliance. So normally we try and meet both of those. So, um, <clears throat> you know, one of the, the, the first steps in which we would try and help a company to become web accessible, um, which we're currently doing, so we go to, to different companies and then we audit their, their websites and say, hey, uh, you're not accessible, do you want to do something about it? Um, <clears throat> so it's very fun for us. It's like, you know, companies that we interface with daily, knowing that we can do something about it. Um, so we would audit by using a screen reader, and I think it's, it's really fun when you use a screen reader because it's all about being a, a keyboard shortcut pro. Because you can't use a mouse because uh, people with vision impairment cannot see the cursor, right? So everything has, um, you'll see later when, when Dixon demos, it's, it's super fast, you know, the way he goes through it. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's refreshing that you get to view the structure of your website with a different sense. Can that bring about a new form of innovation in the way you see things? Um, that, that might be interesting to explore. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. So I think I'm reaching the last few parts for my, my aspect, but I wanted to share a little bit about, um, you know, These Abilities uh, ASEAN A11Y initiative. So These Abilities is a company that I started. Uh, it's a social impact startup that marries disability design and technology. Um, and <clears throat> we're essentially a social enterprise. And, and, you know, with this initiative, what we're doing is we're saying, can we get more developers um, who are keen to learn about web and mobile accessibility to learn from Gyang and Dixon uh, um, uh, about those aspects? Um, and then together as a group, we'll go out and either, um, you know, make your company's products more accessible first, take it back to your own companies. And at the same time, together, we would, you know, venture out and, and help other companies as well. So that's really uh, what we, we want to be doing. And essentially, like, like I mentioned, because ASEAN is pro-business, we can't expect the government to come up with anything like that to ensure access to the internet, which is considered a basic human right in some cases. Um, if it's not web accessible, then people with vision impairment don't have access to the internet. So uh, we would have to be the enforcers of this new web standard in ASEAN. Yeah. <coughs> so... Um, the stages of web accessibility um, at the moment, uh, really briefly, is, you know, to do an audit and then we, we fix the bugs and then the last step is to, to have, um, make sure that we comply with the global standards. Sometimes the global standards, there are a lot of things that we can do without, uh, but it just gives you that, the stamp of approval, I guess. Um, and it really covers not just people with visual impairment, but uh, a wider range. You will find it very interesting how people who are deaf or hard of hearing or people who are severely paralyzed um, interface with the internet. And these guidelines cover that as well. <clears throat> so how can you start? Uh, like I mentioned, you can take this back to your own company to practice. Whatever simple things you learn, I think uh, at the very most, by the end of this workshop, you would have learned how to use screen readers quite a bit. Um, so try and use screen readers on the products that, that you've helped build so far and, and see how accessible it is. And then at the same time, if you choose to join us um, on, uh, for our meetups for, for the ASEAN A111 initiative, then we will go to other companies with bad web and mobile accessibility and help them out. So um, the next step is I think we're going to have Dixon to demo a little bit um, how he actually uses uh, the screen reader to interface with websites. 
um, and from a user standpoint. And then Gyang, I think he will also um, demo a little bit on how he uses a text editor or what are you using? Eclipse. Uh, so he will use Eclipse IDE to essentially show you how he uses a screen reader to do that. Um, I didn't introduce them well enough, but Gyang is uh, Grab's first blind coder. Dixon is NUS School of Computing's first visually impaired student. So they've def definitely had to jump through a lot of hoops in terms of how their colleagues or um, schoolmates collaborate so that they can, you know, be at the same level. So that's definitely very interesting. <coughs> um, the, the last two points I wanted to mention is because we're in a very, very small group, so let's keep it very informal. If you can't follow something or you have a burning question, um, just raise your hand, voice it out, and then we will address it. Um, because I think this is something that potentially will be very new to everyone. Um, let, me, let me just have a show of hands. Um, who is um, looking at web accessibility for the first time? Okay, most accept, uh, one, two, three, four, okay. Um, so therefore, I think any questions that you have, someone else might have as well. Um, so don't feel shy to just voice out. <coughs> um, the, the next step is also, I think, um, we, we want to have a tool check. So you should have a, your headphones with you. I think we'll use the Safari browser. Um, and there will be an info sheet uh, with a bit of uh, keyboard shortcuts as well. Um, do you have that on your Twitter already? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'll post it. Okay, so um, this is Dixon's Twitter account. He will post. He will pin a post with the download link to this info sheet. Um, and yeah, okay. So just give us a minute for Dixon to kind of post this on no, Twitter. Yes, yes, sorry, to, um, to, 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 to set up the I think I can do it just before the actual session. So so I can do it while Gyan is the uh, wait, wait. So now is your demo, you know? Yeah, correct. Oh, but so we don't need the, the, the shortcuts first. But okay. Yeah, we need to set up this first. You don't need the shortcuts right now. Yeah. Okay, is the Bluetooth set up really? No. Not yet. Okay, uh, guys, sorry, just give us a few minutes. We'll just set up the Bluetooth so that you can hear uh, the screen reader being read out on the, on the computer. Is it on? No, no. So let me just turn it. Okay, and then I'll. Oh, okay. Um, you look at Bluetooth settings. <laughs> Yep. Uh, so you cannot use the projectors. Oops. Okay, you should be searching. Oops. Oh, no. Uh, it's good Bluetooth. Just, go, just type Bluetooth. Oh. Bluetooth and other device settings. You say Harman Kardon or something. No, no, I need to go because there's a tree that looks so. Yeah, I can't find it. Maybe it's just a tree. It's all unknown devices. No, 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 no. Just, just let it. Can I open again? I'm trying to find a Bluetooth. I'm searching with you, but I'm going to do it first. Where did that guy go? No, no, he passed me the remote, so okay. Okay. Uh, Esquire Mini, HK? Yeah, Haman Kardon, I think. Yeah, just try that. Oh, Hamon Kado and HK. How do I? Oh, <laughs> I was looking for Hamon Hamon. Yeah. Okay. Shame, I saw one. That's pretty. Ready. So did my eyes. Oh. Are. Oh my. Huh? Okay, try and play something. Oh, okay. oh yes. Yeah. Yes, okay, it works. Okay. So I'll just put it in the middle so everyone can hear. <laughs> okay. Um. <coughs> so then you can plug in your computer again. Yep. So it's uh, I'm gonna plug, plug in the HDMI. Let me help you. Oh, I thought it's already plugged in. No, okay. 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 So, so let me wait. Hold on. Let me clip this onto you. Ah. Okay. Okay. Uh, then this should be okay, right? Is it okay. 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 Okay.
Yeah, I just don't want it to get in the way of your... Oh, okay, okay. okay. Just put on the table lah. Mm. Yep, that works. So, right, so let me just... Yeah. Can the screen is... 320, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, no, just, just uh, don't du uh, duplicate lah. Duplicate, not selected, number four. Yay, okay. You're set, okay. So now can Start I pay. just begin? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Can everyone right? see the words on the viewer, the text? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think maybe you can enlarge it. Enlarge, oh, can you tell me to do it? Thank yes. you. I feel like it's more muted, too small. FDTA speech viewer dialogue, edit red only multi. Mm, can? Oh. Mm. Okay. So essentially, um, the speech viewer will because sometimes you cannot hear the audio, so Start that page. um you can see what's being read out uh, on the speech viewer. Start so they can search engine that was in the box. Right. So uh, hi everyone. So. Um, over here, I am currently running a uh, screen reader, which is sort of um, talking. And so now what I'm going to sort of show you guys is um, how I, I would sort of go about using um, Amazon as well as a local, re a local retailer to sort of uh, s get information about buying a specific product. And then we'll you know, compare and contrast the differences between these two websites. So right now, what I'll do is to press the, uh, it's a standard Alt-D shortcut since I'm on Windows to go to uh, A selected M. A. to Amazon.com. No. And let's see if this loads. Ah, okay. Amazon.com online shopping So over here, okay, I'll stop it. So, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so over here, um, I, I know that the page has uh, finished loading because it's, it started talking and reading out you know, the title and, and so forth. So right now, let's say that I wanted to buy, I actually do, I actually do want to go and buy a new laptop. So let's see if I can find um, the, ad, the uh, search bar on this page. So over here, um, one thing that screen readers provide is are actually very like, efficient and fast ways of finding various structural elements of your page. So right now, I'm going to move to the next uh, edit field. And landmark, navigation, landmark, search, landmark, search so, so it said a bunch of things that this is, in, this is a part, part of, of the banner of the page and now I am on this search field and I can start typing. So, e -E -L -L space -E -S space one, three. so let's say that I, I was buying this particular machine. So one thing about screen readers is that they are use this is si this is sorry let me stop. this is uh, synthesized speech. So um, it so it always pronounces the same uh, words or sentences or phrases in exactly the same way. So it sort of becomes possible to get used to how uh, it speaks, and then so so that you can slowly like increase the uh, speech rate. So this is. Uh, like typically how I use this page. So right now what I'm going to try to, to do is um, to, I, so I, I could start off by just pressing the arrow keys to you know, slowly, sequentially read through the entire page. So this is roughly what it would sound like. So as I you know, move down, you can hear that I'm moving, you, you, you can see that I'm moving past the uh, search field. And then after that, this is this is basically the 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 uh, sign in related pages and and stuff. So let's say that I didn't want to do this because this will take me a, a long time. So what I will now try to do is to move to the first level one heading. So um, we sort of rely a lot on on having correct uh, structural landmarks on this page. So it's it main landmark search results. So I know that this is exactly where I want to be. And I can move, so, so wow, it's quite a fair number of results. So I, I can sort of move to the next heading. 
So here, um, let's say that I wanted to, you know, buy this computer, but you know, so it it said a, it said a bunch of things like the processor speed, the hard drive, uh, size, capacity, RAM, and so forth. So I can also move more slowly, um, word by word, in, in, instead of only relying on it reading the entire line or pa or paragraph at a time. Yep. So this is you know the the screen and its anti glare and so forth. So let's say that I wanted to go to come to this page. So I've just okay, and uh, so it has finished loading. And again, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna try to do is that since um, the main content of the page was after a level one hitting, I'm I'm gonna try this again to 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 see if it works. Yep, so uh, I'm here and and so it told me that so it told me that um, 5.0 out of 5 stars, wow, okay <laughs> with uh, 4 customer reviews so over here, um, like this is sort of what it, uh, it says and I can continue to move down And so you know the list price is the price and so forth. Yep. Right. So I can so so this list it it told me that I am entering this list. And I can sort of continue to move down and so forth. And what I can also do is that you know since move since moving by hitting worked for me earlier, so I'm gonna try it again because um now I'm making sort of an uh, an educated guess out that uh, the other major sections of the web page are also uh, preceded by heading. So I'm I'm going to try that. Oops. Yep. So now I, I'm I'm in a level two heading. So this is a the frequently bought special offers. Have a question and so forth. Yep, and so the technical details and so forth are heading level one. So I, I can move to the next or previous heading or, or I can also move to a specific level heading. So, so, you know, it sort of depends on what I know this page has. So this is, you know, roughly like how um, I would use, I would navigate a web page. So like, you know, up to this point, you know, do any of you guys have any questions? How long did it take for you to like uh, be able to uh, get up to like rate 90? Mm. Like, that's something you mm. Let me think. Uh. Like yeah, so I started using this in like 2004. Uh, so I have to come backwards. Uh, 12, uh, 13, oh, 13 years, yeah. So I mean, you know, so like it's, it's like as you start, I think I started at around, you know, the rate that uh, it was at earlier. Then you know, as you become more used to how it says certain things, and then you just slowly increase it by a few percent every you know few weeks or or, or something like because I, I, imagine basically using the computer at that rate, you know. So it's like you you are, you are basically just spending your time waiting for it to tell you things rather than you know you doing your your own thing. Hmm. Yeah. So it is possible to get used to it. Hmm. Yes. Any more questions? <coughs> so, uh, right. So, um, if not, you know, I will next um, compare the experience on you know Amazon versus a local retailer. Um, crap. How do you? Sorry, Ken or um, how do, how how do you spell it? Lazada. Ah, thanks. <laughs> Dot. S G. And sorry. Why is it taking so long to load? Uh, oh, did I? Oh yeah, I didn't make any typos, so it's just hold on now. Yeah, it's a bit slow. Sorry. Oh 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 oh. Okay, okay, thanks. It's a, yeah. So over here, it's you know, it's no, 
uh, sort of notice that it's also telling me exactly the characters that I selected and so forth, so so that I know that. Oops. <laughs> Why don't you go to Google and search? Oh, it's a Ah, yes, okay. So now we are, you know, we are here. So um, on this page, I'm going to try the same uh, trick again because I, I want to move to the first, you know, um, edit, edit, edit field on this page. And I can, I can do so. Oops. Hmm, what's going on? Oh, okay, so it seems that um, there is a, some modal dialogue. So this is totally unscripted because the previous time that I was here, this thing didn't exist. <laughs> so let's see. Wait, what? Why? What? Wait. What the hell? Okay. Um, whatever, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I mean that has to be some faux, faux uh, you know, faux pas on the part of the developers. But anyway, <laughs> okay. So let me just okay. So I'm I've I just did the same thing that I uh, tried. So I am now in the search field and I can start typing again. And okay. And so I'm here. So now let me repeat the same ex, uh, you know, navigation sort of method. So I'm going to try to move to the next heading that I find. Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, like, I mean, I, I haven't gone through all, all the headings of this page, but just by the, the headings that I see, this is probably not going to get me anywhere quickly. So the, the next thing I'm, I'm going to try is to go back up to the top of the page. And so besides headings that I, I guess that uh, you guys would be, would have, you know, have heard of, um, there is sort of another way of um, dividing the structure of your web page. So, so these sort of, and this is called a region. So you, you can think of a region as a way of expressing in the HTML what you guys, you know, perceive visually on the page, you know. So for example, if the page has a bunch of navigation links at the top, you know, going across the top, then you will actually um, enclose that in HTML in a, in a banner, in a pair of enclosing, you know, less banner, greater text. So this is how a, uh, you know, someone who is um, using some alternate interface can also perceive this page. So let me try to see if this works, to see if they have divided their page into <coughs> regions, right? <clears throat> Sorry, there's there's a uh, this okay. So it said navigation landmark. Okay, I mean so so I guess this is where the 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 site navigation stuff is, and then oh, okay. So uh, there are no more landmarks. So okay, so so these two are the real heur heuristics that I often try to quickly get past the page. You know, past the irrelevant stuff to the main content of the page. So I guess you, you, you can think of it as the, the equivalent of scheme reading or just, you know, your eyes moving to where the main parts of the page is. So now um, I have no choice. I have to, you know, explore this page more, th more th th thoroughly from the top. And I'm going to start reading uh, the entire page. All right. So what I heard, so I noticed that over here, um, after the after the uh, search, after the search field, right? So after the the search field, there's actually this thing that says search results, and then I know that so there there are quite a lot of hits, and I've okay. So this is this appears to be a way for me to select uh, what I what I want to sort. So let's see uh, what this reads. Uh, hmm. Okay, I mean, I have no idea what this does, so I'm just going to escape and, and hope that this didn't do anything, right? So, yeah, so I'm, so, so, so now I know that, so, so this appears to be the first uh, actual hit, that this is the Dell XPS uh, 13. So what I sort of learned from sort of like this is that 
I can also move to the next uh, or previous uh -huh. combo box, which is what the sort of HTML, this particular element is called on the page. So I know that in the future, I can, from the top of this page, I can basically move to the next combo box. And then just below that is the main content of the page. But you know the point that I'm sort of trying, uh, that, that you know the uh, the point I'm tr trying to sort of illustrate is that since you know the first two like methods sort of fail, then I had to work a bit harder to find where the main content of the page is. And although I know now that the contents or the or these search results are actually right after this combo box where you are supposed to be able to select uh, how you sort the results that this is site specific, you know? So one thing is that this is site specific. And the other is that this is bound to change when perhaps the visual layout of the page changes. Yeah. So let me just go um, to the first uh, result for the Dell XPS 13 and see if I can read the, uh, the specifications for this particular computer. Right, so the page has again finished loading. Oh, okay, so now um, I just tried to see if I can move by heading and it worked. So now I'm, I'm here. And... Hmm. All right. Right. Yep. So, it, so, so this is, uh, this is it reading you know, the, the, the uh, details of this page. Yep. Oh, no. Yep. Okay, so, uh, you know, this, like, hopefully this sort of gives you an idea, you know, of, like, the difference, you know, of having, uh, you know, good structural elements in your, in, you know, your web page versus uh, not having the uh, structural elements, you know, so like, like if I'm actually going to buy an XPS 13, I guess you guys will know which site I would actually prefer to buy from. <laughs> yeah. So any questions um, up till this point? Yeah, one question over. Yeah, so does hmm. it mean that for every website that you go in, you sort of like have to always remember how the structure is? Mm, so it depends on the on how the website was done. So in the sort of previous uh, what the the previous example for Amazon, um, what I was able to do is to actually um, so in this page I didn't really have to do any site specific uh, workarounds because moving by headings sort of works. So headings are sort of a sort of you know thing. It's defined in the HTML uh, specification as a way for you to logically divide uh, content. And to use, you know, like levels, like level one could be the, the where the you know the actual title and so forth, and then level two would be subheadings or subsections and, and so forth. So one is that on Amazon, I didn't have to, you know, like spend extra you know brain brain cell cycles to uh, understand you know the layout of, of of this page, and you know and so um, hopefully you know that like answers your question. Like if your the website, you know, has these like standard ways or standard ways of navigation. Then, no, really, those specific uh, workarounds would be necessary. Hmm. Um, follow up question is: that hmm. There are some website that does like non fresh kind of like hmm. app, right? Yep. How do you actually like use those apps? Hmm. So, like, do you mean a uh, single page application? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So that's um, that's gonna be sort of um, I'll, I'll I'll touch a bit on that uh, later on in sort of the later examples. But sort of like the there is a sh that there's a way to actually mark parts of your page as being so called a live region. So 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 you're sort of saying that um, this page has this part of your of of the page has something that can change. So you can have elements added. Or remove from the DOM, you know, in this particular section, and then if your if a particular uh, uh, um, in interface that you are using to access the site understands these markup, which a screen reader in this case does, then 
um, it's able to be automatically announce changes to that specific part of the page only. Yeah, so you do actually have a fair, a fair, a fair deal of control over that. Yeah, so I'll um I'll be um talking about that in a in a later in a later, uh, section. So also one final sort of thing about how I you know use headings and regions to uh, move about this page. I can also move move by region here on uh, Amazon. Yep. So I know here that you know there's a search, a place I can search, and this is the main content. So. Um, the other thing is that a screen reader isn't the only uh, thing that is going to be that's going to benefit from your site being you know structurally having good structural markup. So you know, I guess that some of you would have used services like Instapaper or Readability or you know like your browser's reading mode to extract the main parts of the page, you know, the articles without without the distraction of the sites, you know, uh, links and advertisements and so forth. So I bet that part of how it does this is actually relying on good structural uh, your your site being structurally easy to analyze by a computer program mm. you know so like having this markup not only you know it it, it sort of may benefit more more you know uh, people than you think it does yeah so let me think i think that's yep so next Gyang. so uh you know next you know um Gyang will demo how um, how he accept, how how he does some programming. Mm. Um, uh, Gang, are you going to use Dixon's computer? Mm, no, because this mm, he um he don't have eight leaves in his computer. Okay. Then I've got to see that now. Can you uh, open uh, on open your Bluetooth settings? Mm. Mm. Yep. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Ah, yeah, you see it. Okay. <coughs> so, um, I just wanted to mention first that um, Dixon intentionally left the speed to be uh, a bit faster because just to, to simulate really how he does it. Later on, true. Um, but I think we also wanted to emphasize that um, you can tell that he can listen to it very fast. Technically, if given the right conditions, he can work as fast as possible in looking for uh, extracting information from websites. But based on the structure, that might be oh, oh. So, oh. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, <laughs> so I let me stand up a bit. I said, oh, days I need to stand a bit. So, uh, can, can you hear at the back? Can you guys uh, hear me clearly? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Alright, so now uh, you guys uh, accelerated into the very high speed, so now we can cool down a little bit. So, uh, so a lot of people will uh, like ask me some questions like how can I code, how can I do programming, how can I run a program, what is my difficulties. So now I just uh, give you guys a, um, a brief demonstration to uh, see how can you do it and using screen readers. So um, usually everybody use a mouse, but for me, uh, I, I use keyboard only. So like, every, everything is based on shortcuts. So here I'm using Eclipse to write some um, Java code. So I will uh, slow down the speed. Slower. Left there, the font package, right there, moment. Left there, left there. So here, for example, if you want to uh, create a new class, right? Uh, yeah, I can just sorry, sorry, Eclipse window is Small space, meds, limit values. This one now. No. Left there, the... Oh, yes, yes, okay. This one. Okay. Thank you. Applications, context, meds, go into I. So to open this menu, usually you uh, you guys will press uh, right arrow, right? But for me, I will press application. So I use uh, no, so uh, in, in, instead of uh, right mouse click, I use um, application. Open, go into I. Open type I rocky four and. So here you can see that uh, screen reader will support uh, blind user by uh, give them a lot of information. 
So from here you can you, you can hear that. Show alt plus shift plus W submenu W. O plus shift plus W. This is the shortcut. So after the the name of the menu, uh, it will show me the, the shortcut, and then it will you can see. Oh, go into I. Open type I. Show alt. Show local. Show open the new submenu. New submenu. Submenu. It mean uh, I will press right arrow to uh, uh, to, to open another another menu inside. Project dot dot. Add a class C. Add a B. Class C. Enter. Add leaving menus. No. Uh, Name colon edit. M. M. Blank blank. M. Y. D. 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 E. L. O. C. L. A. S. S. Enter. Cancel button. Preview left. Public blank. Public blank. Right brace. Blank. Enter. 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 Control. Control S. Okay. So. Blank. Blank. Uh, usually, if I want to read something, I just simply read from top to bottom. Top of file, blank. Public class, my blank. 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 Okay, so now I, I will write some, uh, some, some, some code first. E L L I C blank. Blank. Pub blank. Public class, my head. Blank. Blank. Info is public. Head. C. Blank. Space B. O R T space B. R I T. Left right space left right enter. L I S T space and equal less S T T T R I G greater space L I S T space equal space and E dot space A R R R R A Y L I S T less greater left right there semicolon oh and 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 okay so if I write something like this so usually uh, you will ask me okay how can I know that it, it, there is some error. There's some typo error or there's some syntax sy error or even like for example I forgot to import my library or something. So I am using the different uh, screen reader uh, from from Dixon. So I'm using JAWS. Dixon is using uh, NVDA. So for JAWS, uh, you can write some script uh, to to support this screen reader. So there's the built-in script. That now will tell me, like for example, uh, in in some some in some part of the code, we got some error. It will show you the like I I think it's a red color, right? So it will tell me that this this part is invalid. So slow slower blank public class my demo class left brace. This one is fine, right? Blank public void print left pair and right pair invalid list and invalid invalid list. It means the the list word here. It, it, we have some problem with this. Oh, invalid I. So let's see what happened. So here I I I, I can see I, I can. Uh, so can you write it? Yes. Uh, can 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 you? Mm. Hold space. X limit. Back. Sorry. Uh, I need to uh, make magnify the, uh, the screen. All equals. All shift equals. Menu file menu to move through items quick. Alt shift, alt, alt shift equal. Yeah. To move through items, press up or down arrow here. Control E, control, control, control equals. Mm -hmm. Also leave it menu. Yeah. Menu, file menu, to move through items, press up or down arrow period. Yeah. Leave it menus, edit, type of text period. Okay. Control shift equal. Control shift equal. Control shift equal. Yeah. It's what? Yeah, yeah. Is it big, big enough? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right brace. Right brace. Uh, sorry, we have some problem with uh, the Bluetooth speaker. Okay. Okay. Is it still powered? Okay, it's fine now. Okay, so now, now we come back again. How how can I know and find the error and and, and find find out how to solve this error? So for example, it's tell me uh, this part is invalid. I will press control one. Uh, Again, it is all, uh, also the, sh uh, the shortcut. Control one. 
and then and I press the button to find uh, how can I solve this. Import apostrophe, list apostrophe, left there in Java dot under. So you can see that it, it will read me uh, read to me like in, import apostrophe list apostrophe because now I'm you uh, I'm writing code so I need to know every punctuation like parents uh, parentheses or dot or comma so I, uh, I I I can figure my screen reader so uh, whenever I open uh, the text editor or the ID for coding it will read for me all those things so. It, it's a little bit annoying in, in, in this situation. Import apostrophe, list apostrophe, left there and drop. Enter. Okay, so now I'm gonna fix. And invalid, invalid, list, right, right, invalid, list, and dip, oh, land. Still invalid? Oh, in control shift, oh, 20%. Toolbar, and invalid, right, right, invalid, list, and oh, land. Oh, invalid, jaws, or windows, escape, this escape, folder, escape, folder, escape, okay, invalid, escape, 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 is how can I use uh, the code uh, completion? So usually when you type, right, you can see the list of uh, uh, suggestions. For me, I ha I, again, I have to press like shortcut to, to move to this. So for example, when I press periods, it will show me a list of uh, available function. So I, I just simply press start to print it up. Just so use uh, up and down arrow to find it. This is another situation that will show me the error. So now, for example, I have a big project. I don't know where where the error is. I cannot open all the class to see the invalid lines. This is, this is, this is so I just uh, again use all my shortcut to see this uh, the menu of the error. All shift Q, list C, edit, type of text. Escape, escape, escape. All shift Q, X, three view the level zero errors errors left level one invalid character constant resource enter escape edit selected list not add left parent apostrophe s apostrophe shift acute slash to dip and dimple quote left parent quote quote invalid and dimple dimple r t and semi right back apostrophe right back apostrophe shift quote and dimple is quote list not add left parent quote string one quote right there control s edit close dot my demo and dimple is end blank my demo end blank Semi control control F eleven. And then I, I, I just simply go to the show and see my edit. result. 
Okay, so um, from this, you can see the way how can I do uh, coding, how can I deal with uh, like problem, how to I can I can uh, recognize the red line of error or anything. The final thing is how can I debug? Uh, the the answer is uh, right right now is almost impossible. So what I can do it, for example, I want to know how the codes work. My I just simply, for example, I want to go, I, I want I, I want to see how the print function work. I just simply go to this function and then press F3 to F3. open this thing. And, and I read the whole code. Okay, so mm, do you have any question? Yeah, that's one. So how do you detect syntax error? Yeah, uh, I can detect syntax error by, uh, like, uh, for example, when I for left there, I, I will try to make an error now. Let's not add left and semicolon. Clear the semicolon. Okay, so or if I go through this line, let's not add, let's not add left there and quote string to quote right there. It will uh, tell me this this one this line is in, in invalid. List not add left parent quote string to quote invalid right parent. Invalid right parent is mean this right parent here we got some problem there. So and uh, I can guess that I, I will miss the semicolon. Semicolon. And right there list list not add left parent quote string to quote right parent semicolon. And then it it will not read uh, invalid anymore. So that and is how I can detect like uh, obvious uh, syntax error. But this one only works uh, for my screen reader, it's with JAWS. If you're using and VDA, is, uh, we have to run. And after running uh, fail, uh, I can open the uh, error view viewer and then try to find the errors. It's a little bit slow, yeah, of course. Yeah, one more question. Um, have you used the uh, mic? In different IDs and things, um, are there things that you would like, you wish the IDs did better in general, or like just general, like, what are your like things that really, really, really frustrate you? Yeah, very short. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> will, will, will that take the rest of the afternoon? <laughs> okay. So I'm using some of them. For example, Eclipse is very good. Uh, Visual, Microsoft Visual Studio is also good. I mean, it's a bit heavy, but it, it's still fine. Like I can, I can code. I can do <coughs> many things there. I use uh, SDS, uh, Spring uh, Tools uh, uh, Suite, is the website, uh, the, the the thing to building website, which is Spring uh, Framework. It also works well with uh, Screen Reader. But uh, now I'm using Android Studio to work in Graph and. Actually, this Android Studio is not so very well. So, for Android Studio, I, I have some problem with configuration. Uh, I cannot change something in setting, and uh, uh, sometimes it's uh, when when whenever I open screen reader, it's a little bit slower than than normal. Than, than uh, yeah. Thank you. So I think the the next part when when we're going to walk through. Um, the screen reader uh, process, right? <clears throat> I think the key thing to, to note for you is uh, the concept of what you see is what you hear. Make sure that everything that you see that you're looking for as you go through the your visual flow can match up with the audio flow that you're listening to. Um, I think that's the, the most important thing to emphasize uh, as, you're, as you're going through it. Uh. So yeah. Mm, okay. So um, there's a cheat sheet here and I think with the what you what you see is what you hear. Uh, we're gonna demo uh, with a different kind of e-commerce site. We, we're gonna go to bookrepository.com uh, to look for a particularly uh, popular book lah. Mm. So yep. okay, there you can. Is it on? Uh, come yep. on. Okay. Come on, F5. Come on. Voice over on Safari. Voice over Chinese. Voice over Chinese. Everyone has voice over on their laptop already. As in, it's a yeah. Mac, so. Um, so if you want, you can just wear one side if it's possible, so you can hear the instructions as well. Mm. Uh, that's normally how they do it. But if you find it too difficult, then just put both sides, lah. Right. Visit uh, link. Voice over chat. Web content. You are currently on web content. Visit link. 
Voice over, right. So, uh, yep. Okay. So the first thing is, you know, that you guys uh, will want to be to, to to be doing is to turn on voice over itself, and um, so the key the keystroke for that is uh, command plus F five. So this is this is a toggle that turns it on and off, and you and this works in any application. So. Um, the other thing is that VoiceOver in its default configuration, if, if this is the first time that you guys switch it on, it's okay. Shit. okay. Um, if this is the first time that you guys have it on, then you might have this um, dialogue that asks you if you want to, if you want to take part in this uh, quick start tutorial. So feel free to you know, just use your mouse to, or, or, or keyboard to cancel that first, or I believe you, you, you can press escape. So, it, so once you know voiceover is on, the other um, setting change that might be very helpful is to uh, modify uh, a particular Safari setting as uh, listed. Um, here. Oops, sorry. So and um, some other sort of pretty important things is that uh, voiceover in its default configuration is also extremely verbose. So it is sort of trying to be helpful by telling you. Uh, what are the keys that you are able to press? Uh, uh, what 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 are the keys you are able to press when you are when your focus is is, is on a particular place? So if you find that too, uh, you know if you need to stop it from speaking, just press the control key. And another key that is very that would be very helpful for your exploration of learning on voiceover is using its uh, keyboard help command. So um, on that page, I said that. Um, a lot of commands use something called a voiceover key, and I said on this page that you have to press Control and uh, Option, I believe, to switch it on. But actually, I didn't know that you can also uh, use the caps lock key itself as your voiceover key. So you know, just re remember that you um, you can press, let's say, caps lock plus K, or you can press Control plus Option plus K. So both are equivalent. So um, since now I we know that we can use the caps lock key, then that's probably easier to use in pretty much every situation. Yeah. So one thing that is um, yeah that is a you use this um, keyboard help that you can activate by. Yep. I think you should slow down the speed a bit. Oh, okay. Um, so can you have to slow it down? Is, is the is the current screen reader uh, that's playing? Is it a bit too fast? fast? Control shift left arrow. So if you slow it down a little. Oh, so I need to escape from. And how about your own keyboard on keyboard your own computer? Is fine. The default should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Inside the voice out is compact. Intonation fifty percent. Volume one hundred Ah, okay. Oh, no, this no, this is oh, okay. oh, this too slow. Maybe I think forty one yep. works. Okay. Does this speed work at uh forty one? Try again. Uh, yep. Let me just try something. Uh, eh? Eh? Uh, I guess. Oh. oh. Eh? Mm? Dix and Tan at the room. Close Dix and Tan at the room. Okay, Vertical well. line Twitter button. Okay, I think Click this voice is sheet window right. toolbar. So I think um, this piece should be okay. Yeah. To interact with the item. So the the uh, the way that you know keyboard help works is that when you um, activate it by pressing voiceover plus K. It basically it basically tells you. Sorry, it, it, it basically allows you to, it's a sort of a safe sandbox for you to experiment with pressing various keys on your keyboard. So for example, um, Control K, oops. keyboard help. Starting you are currently on web contents. Do you enter the web area? Press con Okay. So if you were to wait, um give me a second. Uh, um wait, can is it what's going on with this? What? Uh I'm not sure why it's not speaking. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure, sure. No visible title to interact. Voice over cheat sheet. Ah, content. okay. So if I were to press, oh, Start <laughs> right. So if you're to press, if you if so, it tells you the keys uh, uh, function when you press a particular keystroke. So for example, if I pressed uh, voice over plus F. Control F. 
Fine. Oh, sorry, Control F. Matches text within the window. So all these are, it's, it's basically a safe sort of sandbox for you to uh, play with different commands and so that you know what these commands do. Control. Control. Yep, so this, oh, where's the insert? This control. Can I interrupt for a moment? Oh. Just a very short one. Hello, everybody. I hope you're good. Um, we have some sad news. I'm not sure you saw that, but it's done raining. And the hotel called me and said, like, we can't set up for the beach party on the beach. Mm. Oh. I didn't like it. <laughs> because we had floaties, you know, unicorn floaties, and we had bonfires. And Did she hear the squeal? <laughs> anyway, if it's not raining at 5.30, we're going to still meet on the beach because we have some drones and we still want to pretend, right? So we're going to meet there for our Instagram right. photos uh, and take some inside. of those. Control and then we're going to all move on to level 5 control. here, which so is, is it right caps lock, so caps lock. Caps lock. Caps lock. It's yeah. a full glass room. It's almost as good as being at the beach. And we're going to set up the party and the dinner there. Right? There's going to be a lot of food and drinks and a lot of DBS, so be aware. Uh, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> See you later. Right. Thank you. Thank you. 5-5. Five, five. What's the time now? 5-5. Five, five. What? 5? No, 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 I said now it's 2.30. Oh, okay, okay. We still have one half hour for okay. everything else. Mm. So you have a half an hour plus oh, okay. like 40, 45 minutes yeah. max. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay, continue. Yep. Stop keyboard right. So um, you know if you are ever not sure on which uh, key to press, and then you know just um, just use this uh, keyboard help to to experiment. And um, so the other sort of thing that is um, it might be helpful for you guys to configure Safari as uh, stated on the help sheet right at the top. Right. I'm gonna open a new tab. New tab. Sorry. Command is at the bottom. Oh, this this one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tab, search website name. So, so now, um, blank. So, search website sorry. Name. Sorry. Oh, okay. so one thing is uh, like, you know, that uh, Yang earlier he alluded to was that there are multiple screen readers uh, available. So since Windows is sort of the most uh, like popular platform, there are currently two, actually three major ones. Um, but the way that Windows screen readers work and Mac screen readers work are substantially pretty different. So you know, please, for, for, uh, I'm you know not so like I'm sort of not as um, familiar you know with uh, Mac. You know, so please bear with me a bit on that. Um, so here, um, the the website that we want to go to to for this particular demo. So what what we're going to do is to look f to see if we can look for information on a particular a particularly popular book by going to book repository so if you open a new tab on safari your focus should be uh should be on the address bar and you should be able to start typing B B B O O K D E P O S I T O and so the bar unselected Y of periods O M unselected Book and then and, and then you can just yep. and this is the and this is the uh, site for book repository book depository. So is everyone able to uh, you know hear what's uh, hear something that roughly matches what you heard just now, or is anyone having um, <coughs> hearing something different? Okay. So here, um, <coughs> so here on this uh, web page, um, there are some ways that you can actually navigate uh, to the you know like to the next heading, to the previous heading, to the next uh, list, and so forth. That are listed right at the bottom of the of the document. But there, but um, Voiceover, I guess, in a recent you know update, they created a more you know um, finger efficient way of uh, moving so what you can do is that you on while on this page you can quick nav off you can nav on. um press the left and right arrows to together to toggle on um China's quick transgender tv star and their dating show Wait. three china's transgender tv okay it, to to um you can press it to toggle quick quick nav on and what this allows you to do is that you can first move around this page by pressing the left or the right arrow keys separately this time. 
Facebook repository, millions of books with free delivery worldwide web content. Book repository. Oh, sorry, you, mean, you have to interact with it. Right? Sorry, interact. Interact. Book repository. Book deposit. Vertical splitter. Oh, Book yeah. Interact. Sorry, what's the command? Books and free delivery worldwide. Yep. Yeah. Web content. Interact. You are In interacting with the content. content. To enter oh, the web area. Oh, oh control, control, control option. Shift down arrow. Yeah. So press um s control option shift and down arrow if you don't appear to be able to actually move anywhere inside uh inside this web content yeah Co option is next to control oh, okay control on the other side, oh, on the other side yeah. okay yeah, so if anyone cannot follow at any point I'm just please stop us yeah and then yes. we will come around and mm. try yeah link pause you Thanks. are currently on a link inside of web content to click this link right so now that we are sort of so the so this is sort of one difference that the way voiceover uh, does things. What it does is that it sort of groups logically, logically distinct items um, to um, together, and then what it allows you to do is to efficiently get sort of an overview of the main video window without having to tap through every single link on the web page. So for example. If I stop interacting with this web particular web content, if I if I were to press the left or right arrow keys, I'm now on this particular part of Safari, and this is the the new tab button and so forth. So this actually lets you uh, explore the interface without necessarily being bogged down by details, which is why um, you need to so-called interact or zoom into or set your particular focus onto this uh, web content, Protocols which I will do link, now. You are uh, on a link inside of web content in link. House, house. Right, so now I'm interacting with this web content. So to uh, move to the beginning of the page, you would press you know, voiceover plus home and uh, voiceover plus end. Home can end. Uh, there's only home. up and down. Oh, okay. Is that home? No. Uh. no. Is it function with? There's no. Oh, okay. Uh. I forgot the key. Hmm, sorry, my uh, house. It's okay. Uh, there's no home key. No. Okay. Yeah. And um, so what you can do now is that when you um, switch, is that you can press left or right house. arrows to basically. House. Oops. What am I? Is this? Um, Are you in web? Oh, that's a uh, icon. Oh. Um, icon house. Hmm. Link envelope. Contact us. Yeah, so it, it sort of a, appears that uh, there isn't a home uh, uh, home sorry. there isn't a home key on sort of your oh okay, okay. oh so okay. Okay. Yeah. okay function left Fun function left is home yeah right? can you try caps yep. lock and then function is the very end here mm. Link, contact. Uh, and then voice left home. and right is home and okay. mm, thanks. Yeah, this, yep. So when, when, what's or can you just announce the home key for everyone? Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so when you when you mention the home key on Mac it's function left. And then end is function right. So for if you wanna modify with the voiceover modifier, Link, then contact. in total Sorry. it's ca caps lock function left for home, caps lock function and for right. For and mm. So if I were to press uh, caps lock function and end, I met I met the bot. So yeah, so um, this works. Yep. Link contact. Yeah. So 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 that means that the first item on this page is a is a contact is a contact link. Link envelope contact. And as I and as I use content. As I use the left and right arrow keys to move, I'm sort of moving through different I elements of this page. Link. Information source. Help. Link. Rocket. Link. Truck. Link. White heart suit. Wish. So another way of navigating, um, let's say that you wanted to find a, sp a specific thing, is to use something called the voiceover rotor that you can turn on using Whenever voiceover plus U. And what this brings up, you can think of this as a two-dimensional menu where you can press up and down to basically move through um, sorry. So what, what you can do is that you can press the left or right arrow keys to move to, uh, to select a particular type of web element that you wish to move by. So it's either um, com uh, control option 
U or just uh, caps lock plus U to um, activate this voiceover over rotor. So you can just you know use the left and right arrow keys and up and down to explore this voiceover rotor. And what you can do is that the other thing you can do is that let's say that you know that um, you you know you you want to filter this list, so you can basically just start to type. Link comment link link contact us. Three and items. over here, uh, my sort of I na narrowed it down to three uh, things. And over here, if I were to press enter, then um, you will actually be taken to the um, to the uh, link or the kind of element that you chose. So what you can do is also, uh, so 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 this one way of also navigating this page. <laughs> and so if you look at these headings, if you can, if you find this, you know, um, list of headings, there are lots of headings on this page. Heading level one, link, bookdepository.com. Heading level two, best ever book list. Heading level two, popular reading list. Heading level two, favorite authors. So just by, um, just by looking at this list, uh, you can actually gain some sense of um, how this page is structured. So the heading level one is the main is where the, where the main content starts. Heading, heading level two, followed by the this best ever book lists, um, two, popular, reading popular reading books, and so forth. So this is one way that you can navigate by using the rotor, and you can escape by pressing the uh, escape key. So um, the other so another sort of um, thing that you guys can try is. Um, Besides using this rotor, you can also pr um, sort of press the uh, up arrow and right arrow keys to together. And what this does is that. Heading not found. Oops, sorry. Um, Form controls. Web spots. It allows you to Landmarks. choose again. It, uh, it allows you to choose uh, what type of element you wish to move by. So you can press up arrow and right arrow or up arrow and left arrow to sort of cycle through this list. And then what? And then what you can do is let's say that um I am words window spots links headings. So let's say that I press you know uh, up and right repeatedly until um I'm at heading. So oh yeah, this only works. Um so 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 um I can press up and down to actually move by that particular element's uh type. So so now my selection was at headings. Heading level one link. Book depository. Heading level two. Best ever book list. You are heading level two. Popular reading. So this is another way of navigating around by using the this um, by using the uh, up and left or right arrow keys to select by the kind of element that you want to move by, and then using up and down to uh, to to move to the next or previous occurrence. So this is so 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 far. I've shown you two ways of navigating. And then there's another way that you can also navigate by activating some something called single letter quick navigation mode, which you so for this to work, you need your or, your original quick navigation mode to be on by pressing left and right. Quick nav off. Quick nav on. Okay, it's it's on now. So what what I can do now is to press uh, voiceover plus oops sorry voiceover plus uh, Q. Oops, where's the Q? Yeah. Is this Q? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Voice over Q. That's weird. That's weird. Maybe it's. Mm. Hey? Mm. Maybe quick nav has to be off? No. It, it's on um, control option. I'll mm. just press Q on its own. Mm. Sorry. No. It seems to be. Give, give, give us a second. Link. New releases. It worked for. You are now. currently on a link. Sorry. Uh, oh. Are you sure it's uh, voice over Q? I believe it's voice over Q. Oh, wait, let's check the other. Yeah. Yes, thanks. Voice over cheat sheet with content. You Which one is it? Are currently on web. It's um near the um Oh voice over Q and quick nav is on. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't eh? work though. Hmm, does it, it worked on my machine. Uh hmm. let me just try to think. Which version <laughs> of which version of uh Maybe Mac you can just skip this part. Yeah, okay. Maybe I might just if you guys can't Link. if you guys are also happy Links. if um Voiceover plus Q doesn't seem to be um, doing anything. Ah, eh? Wanna... Hmm? Yeah. 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 Wait, well, you were in keyboard help just yeah, now. Yeah, I was in keyboard help just now. Then can you uh, turn quick nav on? 
Starting keyboard help. Uh, quick, control quick, Q. Quick keyboard help. Oh, this is Control Q. So this is um. Mm, it's also help. Option. Control Option Q. Give me a second. Option K. Stopping key. <coughs> yeah, it doesn't work. No. Mm. Uh, can I try? Yep, try. To turn on um single single letter quick navigation mode. To turn on um single letter quick navigation mode. Single letter quick navigation mode. It's okay. If if it doesn't work, it's okay. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. For example, why why you need this? Okay, wait. It's okay. It's okay. Um, it's okay. It's okay. I think it's okay. So maybe this feature might have been I it it, it could have been you know introduced in a uh. In a in a different version of uh, Voiceover or Mac. So when I when I tested it on a when I when I uh, tested it, it worked for me. But it, but perhaps it requires some up some existing update. Yeah, yeah, it does not work anymore. Oh, it doesn't work anymore. Okay. You mean uh, single letter to, to find links? Or yeah, yeah, correct. No, it no, used no, to work. It seems seems not to be working the latest version. Oh dear. Oh, okay, so uh, they broke something. <laughs> okay, they broke. Something. Or maybe they they, 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 they changed their mechanism, so we need to turn it on. But mm. the latest version, I can't remember anymore. Yeah. Mm. I think it's different. Yeah, see here. Voiceover help menu six items. You are currently in a voiceover closing voiceover help menu, heading level two, favorite authors. So another useful uh, sort of command that you can try is also bringing up voice voiceover uh, help. And in this menu, help menu six items. It sort of this is where where you can sort of get help to online help control up commands help to uh, control option H H to for for various voiceover re re resources keyboard help control option K commands help menu control option H H commands help menu fourteen items you are currently in the voice of one hundred forty ten two 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 so over here uh, in this slide. in uh when I was in the command menu you can um start typing to basically filter. Um, for to look for a specific command. So this is useful if you forgot the keystroke for a particular command and you wanted to use it anyway. Find previous landmark. So let's say I, I wanted to activate this find previous landmark command. Heading level one link bookdepository.com. You are currently on a heading level. Yep. Right. Hmm. So the next um, thing that I would like to sort of demonstrate now is to is to move is to move to the um, nearest uh, form field so let me see the command for this is uh, let's see. give me a second enter search text Oops. previous search python oh no control <coughs> give, me a, give me a second Search one on. Can you search the uh, voice over cheat sheet? What? Give me a second. This is a uh, enter search text. Previous search. Uh, uh, oh, ah, okay. heading level three. Elements map heading level three. Elements navigation without single key quick nav information. So this is um, so we will be using that work even without single key quick nav. Row one, column one, action, column two, <coughs> keystroke, row two, column one, move to next heading regardless of level, column two, VO plus command plus H, row three. So, so this is um, this table will be the uh, set of commands that we will be using. Um, so you can go to the next heading by pressing. Uh, voiceover plus command plus voiceover plus command plus H, and if you add shift to the previous uh, keystroke, that should allow you to move to the previous. That that should allow you to move to the to the previous uh, e uh, element, S and you can also do uh, voiceover plus command plus X. List not found. Oh, okay. So in this case, um, that uh, moves you to the next or previous list. But in this case, uh, this page has no lists. And the corresponding um, frame not found. The corresponding <coughs> excuse me. The so you can sort of ex experiment with this. So um, voiceover plus uh, command is sort of the the, the uh, common keystroke. Followed by various uh, letters on the keyboard that allow you to move to various uh, various things. 
voiceover chief, voiceover chief, voiceover chief with content. You are currently on. Right. Hold on, give me a second. Uh, is that? Well, give me, give me a second. Uh, Bella? Yeah, can I just get one thing? What's the uh, one that I do move by? Um, move by form view. The command move by form view. I don't know. Um, is it here? Oh, F. Oh, thanks. If it oh, this is a yes. single letter quick name. Yeah. Sorry. This is the single letter yeah, what, V what or about? command J. Oh, J. Okay, yeah. that's very in unintuitive. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Element thanks, inside. Thanks. Welcome. Right, so um, to move to the next or the previous, uh, you know, form view, you would do. Form element not found. Oops. Form element not found. Hey, what doesn't seem to work? Voice Alex contact. Go to the next one. It's voiceover oh. command J. Mm, voiceover command. Can you can you press it for me? Maybe I'm pressing it. Can you go to the top of the page first? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. Wait, why why is it not reading? Hmm? It's oh. not reading. We may, may we start? We start. Mm. Was, hmm? Did the Bluetooth bigger die? Hmm. Mm. Uh. Oh, we go into the voice or utility. Yeah, I think it died. Uh oh. Never mind, I'll just use my own. Okay. Sound output devices, oh. table, safari, the blank, textbooks. You are currently on a link inside of web content. To click this link, press control, option, space. To exit this web area, press control. So you want to go to a... Next form view. Next yeah. form view. Oh, edit view. Menu. You found no Harari. Click email address. Edit oh, text. Yeah. Dollar oh, right. Search book. Search for okay. books by keyword Thanks. slash title slash author so slash ISBN. Search oh, text field. Stroke. What? Is, um, is it, is it, is command, uh, no, uh, voice over caps lock, mm -hmm. command and then J. Command is where? Command is uh, here next to the, oh, yeah. Thanks. Search button. Yep. You are thanks. currently on a button. To click search for books. So you can press uh, voice over plus uh, command plus J to move to the next or previous field. And then here, a. as the a. sort of instructions as voice over would tell you, you can start to type in this field. A. So let's see, say that I wanted to search for this particular book. F I R E yeah. Fire yeah. Space A N D N F U R Y Fury. And then I link, house, and then I press link house link envelope contact. And then I press enter to to um, voice over help menu six items link envelope contact us. Heading level 2, filter your search. Heading level 2, filter by categories. Heading level 1, search results for fire and fury. You are currently on a... So I, I pressed enter to uh, submit the search result and then I used heading navigation uh, to move to the main search area here. Showing 1 to 3 zero of 9 4 results. Most popular, pop up at 1, clickable, link 2. You are link, link 4, link, right pointing double arrow, link. 26% off Fire and Fury. Heading level 3, Link. Fire and Fury, you are currently on a heading level 3. So this is the first uh, result and we can sort of just read uh, like what's next, what's sort of beneath this heading. Link. Michael Wolf. Link. Outline Black Star. You are currently So on over here, it actually said Outline uh, Black Star. So it's not able to um, tell you like how many stars are how many stars this particular book has? So I guess it's I guess that this um because it's uh, sort of there sort of isn't a label for this, so it doesn't translate. Zero five gen two zero one eight. Link, so let's outlink, I'm, so let's say that I was interested three, link, in fire and fear. in this particular book, and then I can just press um I can just activate this particular link. Link house link envelope contact. And now I am here on the uh, on the f details for this particular book. Heading level one, fire and fury. Heading level two, product details. You are currently heading level one, fire and fury. And then from here we can uh, you are we, currently a blank. we can use the arrow keys to explore this page. The left and right arrow keys. Link buy off link share link envelope link at link t. Link, so over here, you if you were to 
if you were to arrow right a few times from from the heading, you will actually no notice it saying link, link F F you are link T T you are link P P and so forth. So I I suspect that this is because the link uh, isn't correctly labeled. But I guess that this is that this stands for Facebook, Twitter, the first and nine so of forth. Donald Trump's and this is the description Outrageous. of the book. And then, and then now, if we move um, to the next heading, heading level two, product details. You are currently to the product details field, and then we can um, format, get more paperback vertical line three three six pages. You are up dimensions. One, five, three, X. And then we can get more information on this book. Yep. So you know, like try to see if um, if you guys are able to um, hear something similar. Mm. Publication date zero five Gen two zero one eight. You are currently. Does anybody have some uh, difficulties? Or uh, questions up to up till this point? Actually, this is a side question mm. uh, because uh, different laptops, uh, even amongst Windows laptops, the mm. key layout is different. So, actually, how do you overcome that? Do you have like a yeah, so key skin or how do you actually learn the keyboard layout? So, this is sort of part of why I'm so kind of a bit harder for me to conduct this. Uh, portion of the workshop because when I was doing um, sort of the preparation and testing, I was doing it sort of on a Windows uh, keyboard layout. So the, the keyboard <coughs> layout on the Mac is sort of fairly different. So I, ke I kept on trying to, I kept on trying to perform commands and then it wouldn't work. <laughs> but uh, even on Windows yeah. uh, laptops, and nice, uh, certain keys, uh, let's, uh, let's say probably the page up, page down key may be placed mm. differently. So actually, when initially, let's say when you buy a new Windows laptop, so how do you actually figure out? Uh, mm. Actually, it's not that much. Yep. Uh, for example, the whole keyboard is almost the same. Only the mm, so it's only a few those yeah. function keys and so forth. Okay. Yeah, so what we do is that probably have to you know consult the manual or whatever of the manufacturer mm -hmm. and then, uh, excuse me, and then um, see if, and then see if like, you know, we can figure out. Um, Text see element inside of oops. web content to exit. Sorry, and then see area. if and then see if we can. Press can it's to okay, a and then see if we can figure out uh, how this works. The other sort of thing that I, we usually try is to turn on the equivalent of the keyboard help mode, and then press various key combinations, and then see what it says. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so actually, you you have gotten used that your fingers always stuck on the keyboard at the usually the. Position. Yeah, so oh. I guess it's similar to like touch typing. Oh. So where like you know when we usually type, we usually don't look mm -hmm. down um, onto the keyboard. Like once you are used to it, uh, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So um, if you guys are like comfortable or okay, you know, with like so far um, looking at this particular website, then sort of the next um, challenge for you guys would be to get specific pieces of information of um, Amazon.com for another product. Right. Let's see. This is the one with the screen curtain. Yep. Okay, you want to show them how to turn screen curtain on? Yep. Starting keyboard Oops. help. Sorry. Type okay. keys to hear the... Huh? You can just do me. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So, um, the, the next one we're going to do is, because book depository is um, definitely way more inaccessible than Amazon.com. Amazon.com is more accessible, easier to navigate. So everyone, can you dim your screen to total darkness? And then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so we make sure you don't cheat. So total darkness. Just dim the screen. Command L to go to the URL bar. Yeah. Command L go to the URL bar. Yeah. Okay. Just, just dim all the way first. How the hell do you turn it on? Uh, how come it's an off screen? Uh, wait, can we ask uh, Ben? <laughs> ah, yeah, so maybe also dim. Okay, actually, don't, I think should we follow along? Yeah. 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 Y
Seventy percent. Set seventy percent. Control. 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 Caps lock. F F N. Control. So the interaction is slightly different. Oh, but I double tap, but it doesn't go up. It just go up, but then I can't make it go down. Okay. Then it keep going up, going yeah. up. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I think so the commands you're using yeah. wouldn't require any of the keys and touch bar, right? Yes. So from here, order should be there. Yeah. So the oh yeah, we reached the. So most uh yeah, everyone is on the dark screen already. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. So you know the uh, the you know your sort of you know challenge or task is you know to try to get some pieces of information off the same book on Amazon.com. So the book's name in this case is Fire and Fury, and so some I mean some hints that I can give you guys is to you know that there is a command to move to the next or previous uh, form field. Um, you can also move to the next or previous page. Command T. These will be the most useful commands for you to use. New well volume. New volume. Uh, to to move to the next or previous element. <coughs> Search or enter website name. Edit text. Has alternate items. Blank. D I D R I E. Return. Um, can you shift to the? Uh, you want to shift your computer? No, no, sorry. I mean shift to the um, touch, touch. Sorry, not touch. The help sheet, I think. So just, just a help there. Okay, yeah. sure. File slash 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 user slash Chris down below. Everyone's host slash downloads. Not Safari anymore. Okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, any any issue you face, just raise your hand. We'll mm. come over. We'll troubleshoot together with you. Mm. <laughs> So, no, because because on the Google slides, right? Mm -hmm. I put the information you need to retrieve. Oh my God! Okay. Can you log on to here? To your Google Drive. Yeah. No, just use Bella's computer. Just log into your your Google Drive. <laughs> I can't because my password is some random two random characters. Uh, <laughs> but Bella can't log on, is it? She has two FE. Oh my God. So, I, I, so yeah, I think we can just improvise. Right. So the um, I'll, I'll just try to improvise. Right? Uh, on your, can you edit your cheat sheet? No, but you downloaded okay, it. Yeah. Uh, Do you need to go to Google Drive? Why don't we use my computer? No, no, no. Let me just open notes. Um. Control space. Oh, you know, just switch switch off. Switch off. Uh, no, it's fine. Oh, you you do it. Uh, so can we open uh, notes? Or something that I can type in. I don't know. Call Bella. Uh, you need, uh, Bella. Do you need to use mine? Don't open notes, ah. Uh. Why need notes? Notes. Ah, uh, because we want to put the information they need to extract. Mm. Command space. 
Option Command F5 Command F5 Command Fn F Escape Stopping Keyboard Help Voice Over Off ISBN number, name of first review, star rating, number of reviews, and Kindle ebook price. Yep, I think yes. that's, yep, that works. Yeah. <coughs> Kindle ebook price. Where's my drink? So if anyone has anything, you can help them. I 
And sometimes the differences might be might make it even more difficult to use with voiceover. Yeah, so I apologize for not uh, not mentioning that earlier. So we recommend uh, using Safari to um, for this experiment. Mm. Okay. Maybe I think we didn't think about this, but maybe what we can do is mm. not to punish you so bad. Yeah. So maybe you can you can turn on the brightness to see where you're at now. Yeah. And then yeah. Bring you back out again. <laughs> <laughs> <Then> continue. <laughs> See how, how far you've you gotten. So, oh, okay. How is it good? Yeah, it's good. Oh. Right. End of breath. So, you can see what it needs. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, you see the desert? This one. 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 This 
Okay, time to dim your screens again. Thanks, sir. Let me go back. Um, so, we so, it so, 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 so,
Yeah, this common key. Come on. You got more than one You're on F4. Cool. Yeah, go to okay, F5. The voice over on Safari. Voice over cheat sheet window. ISBN, uh, rating, yep. uh, and number of reviews. Okay, oh. anyone managed to get a Kindle ebook price? Because it was actually on a separate uh, web element on the, on the far right. Wow. Yeah, so, so the, the Kindle price, right, it's, it's, it's a bit of a trick question because the be, be, because the way that Amazon um, does its page is also not perfect. You know, I heard someone talk, talk, talking about how the uh, it's it's a bit confusing. So what happens is that the the way that Amazon's page is uh, structured, they have a heading level one that describes the uh, books. You know, it's, it's it's the name of the result uh, the name of the product. But then the place that they put their their Kindle uh, price might actually be before that. So that might happen sometimes. So that's the, you know, that's that's it, that's a bit confusing. Downloads button. You are currently on file slash 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 user slash crypt. Sorry, uh, control tab right here. Control. Yeah, but. Https yeah. colon slash left. Okay, then I will command L. Open location. H so now I'm gonna just um try this experiment to 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 go to Amazon. Hey, at Amazon, Amazon.com bookmarks image. 
So Amazon, here, Amazon.com bookmark. So here it actually um, told me Amazon.com when I only typed in, and so this is its auto complete uh, suggestion support working. HTTPS colon slash slash www dot Amazon. Yeah. So this is Amazon's yeah. web page. Lo- loaded. Amazon.com. And this is Amazon. So now what I'm gonna do is to move to the next. Lo- loaded. F- oh, sorry. Um, to the next form field. Uh, last lo- loaded. Last frame. Amazon.com. Online shopping for electronics, mm-hmm. apparel, com- lo- lo- Apple oh menu. Oh. You are currently on a menu. Uh, to choose this menu item, press into lo- lo- loaded oh, yeah, Online shopping sorry. for electronics, apparel, computers. Bo- sorry. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, hey, it? Uh, oh my god. Eh? Eh? Just open Voice over it. off. Oh. Voice over on Safari. Amazon.com. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, voice of content. Yeah. All departments. Search and pop up button. So if select you, the department. So from from when you're on Amazon's page, when you press uh, voice over plus uh, command plus J, then you can actually uh, you will actually be on this box. And then if you, and then when, when you're on this box, you can uh, start typing. Search text field blank. You are currently on a text field. To enter text in this field, type. So, um, is so does is anyone you know not on this particular, uh, on this particular field? Mm, no one. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I just type. F, I, you are a fire a n d and f u r y. Fury. So I've just typed and I've just pressed enter and I'm now waiting, just w- waiting for the page to. Wait. But Industrial and scientific. Your, what? your category is off. Yeah, oh yeah. Enter. Okay, my category is off. Sorry. Let me just go- re- repeat this again. Oops. Come on. Open location. Select Amazon. Amazon. Select www.amazon. Amazon. dot com. Web content. Eighty-seven percent. Eighty-eight percent. Loaded. Eighty-eight. 89% yeah. love love and then just do the comment mm-hmm. uh, all departments yes. search and po- love loaded all the de- oops banner one item link love load all departments search and pop up button apply apply oh, appliances you're in the category you are current love loaded yeah. all departments search and pop up button select oh. the department search text field love oh, uh, yes. uh, 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 y fury hi and uh, this should be the correct one. Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> All departments, search and pop-up button, search six items, books, Kindle store, politic. And then now I'm going to move by heading. Heading level one, search results. So you are currently on a heading. You can press uh, voiceover plus command plus H to move you to the next heading. And so now I'm in the search results. So I'm going to see if the results are also headings as well. Fire and fury inside the Trump White House. Link. Fire and fury. And here, so I am uh, link. on this link. Can link. Ninety percent. Ninety percent. Ninety percent loaded. Ninety percent loaded. You are currently on a link. Right. So it told me that the page is almost done, and I will try to move to the first. To the first. Banner uh, one item. Okay. Okay. It's done. To the first um, heading again. Home. Loaded. Safari menu navigation global navigation one item. Oh um, common and then the angle bracket. Oh, you're in that. Uh, where do you go? Okay. Fifty five, eighty six per eighty seven per eighty nine, eighty nine per ninety percent, 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 ninety percent loaded. Not ninety percent loaded. Oh dear. Okay. So it's um spamming me with a lot. Okay. So when it's done, it it actually um place this discrete like chirp sound to basically yep this to, 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 to tell you when the page has finished loading for real and then I can also move by heading again um home app oh, oh. oh, oh that's why right, I can't press the home button oh uh, come on uh. print in dialogue link 50 per 76 percent 89 per 89 percent loaded have you entered is it, is the it? web content. I think so. Okay, yeah. So I'm just waiting for this thing to load again. Uh, Link. 
Amazon, navigation 7 items. You are currently on a link, heading level 5 2 items. Buy new, one seven dollars and nine nine cents. You are currently on a heading level 5. I am on... So the first heading that I found was... First heading, heading level 5 2 items. Buy new, one seven dollars and nine nine cents. Was buy new, and in this case it cost seventeen dollars and... Link, pinch, link, Twitter, link, Pinterest, heading level 5 2 items. Buy new, once quantity. One quantity list price through save one in stock ships from and sold by Amazon.com. Get add to cart button heading level five link. Turn on one click ordering for this browser. You are currently on a heading level five heading level five. Other sellers on Amazon pay heading level one three items. Fire and fury inside the Trump White House hardcover January five. So the way that the result is actually structured is a bit funny because you have information about the price. Uh, and shipping options before the actual title as well as the author of the book. So this is laid out a bit funnily on this page. By link, Michael Wolf, link. So I can you move, are currently on a link um, to click continue this link. to move sequentially to the right. Author, link, link, three, link. Amazon charts, number horizontal separate. See all eight formats in the Kindle one link. Red Kindle one, one dollars and six, four cents button. And this is the price on Kindle. You are currently on a button. Link, hardcover 17 loaded, link, 84 link, paperback link, link, 27 new from 1 to dollars and link, 1 collectible from frame, read more, clickable frame. You are currently on a frame. To enter the web area, press control, option, shift, down arrow, read more, click horizontal separate link, ref equals m underline link underline 1. And this is soft. You are currently on. This ref equals something is an example of a hitting with a strange label. And I can continue to move. Heading level two, frequently bought together. Heading level two, customers who bought this item also. Heading level two, two items. Sponsored products will let. Heading level two, special offers and. Heading level two, editorial reviews. Heading level three, review. Heading level three, about the author. Heading level two, product details. And this you is product details. On heading level two. So actually, um, the way that this is laid out is also not perfect because the product details, which is, you know, um, is is right here at at the bottom hardcover 336 pages and this is the number of pages you on, are currently on a text on note. hardcover publisher henry holt and competent language english isbn 10 isbn 13 9781250158062 this is you are the isbn 13 and then if i just continue to move down a few more times heading level two more about the heading level three three items heading level two two items Sponsored product heading level two. Customer reviews heading level three. Top customer reviews. You are current link. Smooth sluggo. Link. Five point zero out of five stars. So this 5. is the five point zero out of five. Link. Renting this book is like January five. So two. this is the you know so this is the information for the top customer review. Yeah. So like you know hopefully like the way that I sort of um did like most of that was by using um heading navigation by using uh, voiceover plus command plus H to move to the next heading and voiceover plus command plus shift plus H to move to the previous heading and then us using the left arrow or right ar arrow key sort of moves you reads you se sequentially uh, from your current position hmm. as well as um, using voiceover plus command plus J to move to the uh, next or previous form view so this sort of particular keystroke keeps on tripping me up because J isn't really, it, it isn't intuitively, uh, intuitively uh, assigned. <laughs> yeah. Set up a giveaway button. Page one of. T right. I, think, I think that's all. Yeah. Okay, now you, now you want to move back here. Yep. Loaded. Oops. Okay, I can just right. oh, yeah, I think next is. Loaded. Next is our Gyang. Gyang. Uh, Gyang. Now Gyang's gonna do us. Segment on. Uh, you mean, sorry, is it, is it Gyang or because is there one for you guys as well? Sorry? Is, is there one on WCAG and so forth as well? Yeah. Oh, for I think oh. Gyang is gonna do that, right? Or no? Um, oh yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Let me just check with. Check with. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's 
Okay. Notes. Safari. Voice over off. been talking all about like all the rules the compliance and um, that that is what we should strive at so after like auditing a website then you um, find the bugs and then you try to be compliant so I'm um, just gonna do a quick overview of what it what we're talking about so uh, this is thing called web content accessibility guidelines WCAG right now it's on the 2.0 and then it's about how to make websites accessible in uh, all ways so um, current, so it comprises of principles, guidelines, success criteria, and techniques. So, uh, so these guidelines are kind of governed by four overarching principles. So perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. And then these, uh, under these four principles, there are 12 guidelines. So the success criteria for these guidelines is uh, for A to double A to triple A. So this is just how you uh, see how compliant you are with these standards. And uh, each of them has the techniques you can, uh, Dixon's gonna go into some ways of how you can uh, achieve these guidelines later. And uh, this is also like uh, done, and there's a lot of stuff online that you can uh, learn more about. And uh, so the first, the, first, the first one is perceivable. So this is uh, not just for people like with different types of disabilities, but also for uh, web crawlers, robots. So this is just um, like uh, Dixon mentioned, like uh, apps like uh, Insta Paper that actually depend on um, the ability to pass a website in a perceivable manner. So making sure your website is perceivable in this way. Second is operable, so that the user is able to use it that they can um, uh, uh, achieve the intended function. Third is to be understandable. So this is uh, so this is just uh, that you m you can convey the message of the website and that your users don't feel like they're lost. And fourth is robust. So it's important to keep updated with the latest te like uh, different technologies. For example, smartwatch. If you want like all these new technologies and platforms coming up, you need to make sure that your website is uh, robust to all these new stand new technologies, uh, also for different users. So there are twelve guidelines. As you can see, it, it's lumped under different um, principles. We'll just focus on one for today, so we don't overwhelm you. So uh, the first one, the most basic, it's providing text alternatives. So this is not just for images, it's also for videos, for graphs, like uh, anything that is not text. So in, in terms of HTML, the practical meaning of what you have to include is like for input fields, you need to include a name. So let's say you have an input field for uh, uh, just like writing your, for your credit card in, but then if you don't put in a name attribute in your HTML tag, there's no way the screen is going to understand what are you trying to ask the user to in input in here. And then for images, you should also have an alt text. And because, uh, like for example, when Dixon was navigating book depository, he was going through like the home icon, but they just read out home. Uh, but they just read out house, and then like for similar things as well. So for icons, for images, you need alt text so that the screen reader can understand what is this image. And a uh, point to note is that alt text should also be descriptive. So, uh, for example, if you write, just write picture of a student, it's not very helpful. As some, uh, someone who can see the visual input, you can get a lot of more in information about this picture than just picture of a student. 
so you can put some more detail, like engineering student working in a microscope lab. And, and another last example is link text. So a lot of times on websites, people will uh, write, uh, describe a link as just like, click this link. But you should be more descriptive also, like click this, uh, click to view this article on web accessibility, something like that. And now, Gyang is going to talk about ARIA. So ARIA is one of the ways you can achieve these guidelines. And it's uh, pretty fundamental for web accessibility. Gyang, are you using your laptop? For this, or do you want to use this? I think if they use this, you can help me to change light. I'm okay, using the microphone. Yeah. Okay, so then. But then you need to read the slides, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think. Okay, just your computer. We don't have speakers. Just your earphones. Oh, yeah, you can, you can, you can just. You can just. Yeah, okay. Can you put the projector? Yeah. It's connecting. Can you put the mic or the. Yes. No. I have to open the slides. Why don't we? Why don't you you use yours and then I will read from mine. Oh, okay, okay. Sure. It's better, right? Sure. That's fine. But it's already connected anyway. Oh, really? Yeah. I cannot hear any sounds. On yours. Okay. Yeah. No. Hmm? No. No? You can't hear your sound? Oh, is it a Bluetooth thing? No. Okay, so you can just your slide and you okay, can fine. give, give me some hints. For okay, example, yeah. what it's talking about. Yeah. So now it's the slides area. Okay, and then the next one is about accessibility API. Okay. Yeah. Like a dormitory interface. I think we can jump to the dormitory to the accessibility uh, API. Okay, is there? Yeah. Okay. Should I start? Yeah. yeah. Okay, guys. So now I will talk about, uh, just give you a brief in introduction about uh, ARIA, accessibility API, and accessibility, uh, and uh, um, like uh, how, how and why we have to use this. And then Dixon will give you a, a detailed like uh, implementation how uh, we 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 use uh, area roles and area attributes. So uh, at first, I will talk about uh, accessibility um, accessibility API. So what is accessibility API? It's actually, it is the tools to give information to screen reader. Uh, for example, you have a lot of uh, elements in your UI. So how can screen reader know what to read out uh, for the user? So they need the API to provide, for example, okay, we have um, how many elements in the UI, how many links, how many images, and uh, what, uh, what type of element we have, like images or label or links or headers. So, so that is why we need the, why we need this. So, for example, on website, everybody know the DOM tree, right? So, uh, DOM tree, uh, the DOM tree is uh, one of those uh, accessibility API. Actually, actually, DOM tree itself is not the accessibility API, but the, the screen reader can make use of this and it become uh, API uh, accessibility API. Accessibility trees. Yeah. So, and, and now what is the accessibility tree? So, um, sp specifically on website, we, uh, this is all um, applicable for website because accessibility uh, tree actually is the sub, uh, subset of the DOM tree. So it's a modified DOM tree. So the difference between it and the DOM tree is usually accessibility tree is smaller than DOM tree. Why? Because they uh, it, it it doesn't contain uh, UI, uh, decorating elements. So, for example, website we have element 
in the um, we have a div, right? And then in the div, we have a few elements like uh, a few spans just for decorating. Like we, we, we want to show some icons that is for, for beautiful purpose only. And we have uh, uh, some links and some header inside this mm -hmm. div. So uh, the, 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 the DOM tree will contain all of those things, but for the accessibility tree, we only need links, the header, uh, and yeah, that's all. All the spans or the, the, the icons will be chopped out. So, so it only contains any necessary information for screen readers. Mm -hmm. So, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I forgot to mention one point yeah. that in, 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 uh, in rich internet application, mm -hmm. not on website, we also need something to convert uh, the usual accessibility API <coughs> into a platform specific uh, accessibility API as well. Okay. So what is ARIA? Yeah, the next one. Yeah. So, ARI uh, what is, and then I, I can I will move on to ARIA. So, what is ARIA? And ARIA is the tool to, uh, that I mentioned before that used to map web. Uh, Accessibility API uh, into platform specific API. Yeah. Um, why ARIA? So, ARIA, um, why we need to use ARIA? Um, Easy to use. We need this because of, at first, it's very, e uh, very easy to use. Uh, you only need to add some like attribute into your uh, XML, uh, XML elements. And second thing is, is it reduces coding. I mean, it, you don't need, it, it, it doesn't add up coding mm -hmm. overhead. It means uh, you don't need to like write uh, uh, too many code. Uh, you don't need to build uh, a separate module or any complex thing for this. And then it's uh, avoid affecting code design. It, uh, you can you can use you can improve accessibility uh, of uh, of your UI without affecting your current design. Uh, for example, you have one icon. Uh, for example, you have an icon to uh, that serves as a button to make a phone call. So the icon is look like the telephone, right? But you don't have any text on this. So if uh, if you want to change, you have, uh, you have many ways, but I, I'll give you two ways. First is change this icon into the button with a text. For example, call or please uh, press this button to call or anything else. So this will, uh, if you change like this, your design will change. The second way is using use area. So you only add one attribute to this to tell screen reader that okay, this icon is a button and uh, it is it, it uh, its name is call. So the screen reader will read out loud to the user that okay, this is a call button, but the design will uh, will stay the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the last thing is it, it is standardized. It is support by, uh, it fully support and we have um, uh, like uh, documentation as well. So, okay, can you move? How to use ARIA? Right. So, how can you, we use, okay, I will move on to the next part. That's how we use ARIA. Uh, actually, we use ARIA by adding attribute, mostly by adding <coughs> attribute to your XML elements. Mm. You need so so, we, so uh, then and, and next we uh, after adding this to to, to help uh, screen reader recognize elements, you should divide uh, your website into uh, reasonable <coughs> regions. And uh, next I we should add uh, we should bind uh, dynamic elements uh, into some accessibility events. Mm -hmm. So that we can update uh, any changes from those uh, dynamic uh, elements. So you can we talk more uh, about this later. And then use basic HTML. Mm -hmm. Use basic HTML. Yeah, but even though we have ARIA already, uh, I think we should use the basic XML elements as much as possible. For example, you have a, a simple website. Uh, I think. Basic HTML is enough. <coughs> for example, we put out text for images. We use button. We use header. <coughs> I think this is enough. 
some simple website we, we don't even we even don't need area as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Area so rules. <coughs> it's the code. Uh, so mm, area attribute better. we have two types of area attribute. Usually we have area roles and area attributes. So what is area roles? Area roles is the attribute that uh, will we help uh, screen it, uh, we, we, we will help screen it and know that what is the purpose of this element. For example, if you put area row equal to like radio button or equal to button, for example, your icon, your spans, your div, your whatever, we become radio button. Become uh, actually when it generate from DOM tree to uh, accessibility tree, it will convert this div or this. Uh, Span or something else that that become to radio button, for example. Mm -hmm. So it will help user know what is the purpose of your icon and how user can interact with this icon. Mm -hmm. Area attribute. So next is area attribute. Area attribute will serve as uh, the thing to to tell you the state and the properties of the elements. So for example. Again, radio button or check uh, check box. Area check. Uh, so, if you put area checks it to, to uh, true, it will show that it's, it, it, it is checked. Mm. And another thing is we have area hidden attributes. We will let uh, we help you to hide this element to uh, from from screen readers. So, all most of the attributes will be prefixed by area. Mm. And then references. So, if you need further information, you can go to those references to, to find uh, the articles about area. Okay, thanks, okay. guys. So now Dixon will continue my part. All right. If you have any questions about, do you have any question? Area or WCAG? Uh, Gyeong and Dixon, like Singaporean <laughs> webs, like website from Singapore, like how much of it is do you find is like complying to these guidelines? Uh, fairly few. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I feel the same. I mean, hmm, maybe like less than half. I mean, it also sort of depends, like because if the website is let's say a WordPress blog and using uh you know your default theme, so actually by default. I, I believe the, the some of the teams actually have all of these accessibility stuff by default. So it's usually only when um, the website has some wants to make some, let's say, a button or a chat box that actually looks a bit different to what you usually see. So that's so so some, some, sometimes <coughs> instead of using an actual chat box, um, you know, element, and then using CSS to style it, what they do is that they just use a div element, and then Visually, they make it look like a checkbox, but as far as your um, DOM is concerned, it's actually not a, ch a checkbox. So, 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 so that's usually where it happens. Uh. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, <laughs> is that the essential element uh, attribute is the what I know is the name and the for the input field and. Mm. Uh, alternate for the image. Yeah, correct. Mm. So, let's say for those, uh, mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, for those, uh, those, those, uh, you other tech element like you know, have order this or order mm -hmm. this. Uh, all those, all you see, or we need to use, um, use these attributes. Sorry, um, yeah. do those what? Do like ally or like all this ordered list? Mm. Uh, do you need attributes? Like, no. no. 
Yeah, so it's because um, you are uh, so like... By default, it's already mapped to the accessibility. Right? Yeah. It's in, 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 uh, inside HTML test, right? Mm. Hmm? Doesn't need to put the attribute in those... No. No. So, so there are these, um, just uh, the, the core elements are already by default mapped to the accessibility API, or like the accessibility tree. So you don't have to do anything special. It's only when you want to do like rich applications. Okay. So that's what ARIA is for. Like, let's say you want to do some fancy no stuff, sound here. and then you're using when this I, and everything. Oh, then you yeah. need to use yeah, ARIA to here, right? assign Sorry? roles to each div. Yeah, right? So Go assigning a div to be the main yeah. part of your web page, or the content <coughs> info, or the banner. And um, you also need ARIA attributes to set the state and properties on these, um, on your, like, your checkboxes, your fields. Hmm. So it's like it's it's only when you are thinking of creating that's a custom React component or or, or, or a custom one or a custom Angular component. So that's typically when you would reach for using uh, ARIA or various or, or, or these types of, of attributes. Because um like whenever you can sort of the recommendation is to use the built-in like HTML5 already have lots of um, built-in attributes. For example, there's even now um an attribute a less audio or a less video greater text so that is you don't even need flash player anymore to do some of these things <coughs> <coughs> so that's the typical recommendation uh, to use built-in elements when possible and only when it's really not then to reach for aria to so-called fake you know by, by fake I, I mean you you make the element appear as if it's a it's a normal html built-in element mm. Mm. So that's so like this sort of um, what are we going through? So hopefully if that this still didn't uh, make sense. Hopefully the next uh, section will cl will clarify a bit. Hmm. Okay, is your sound on? Uh, <coughs> yes. Okay, <laughs> it is on. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So um, in this sort of final uh, section, sort of, I, I, you know, I would like to like explain about how how you you guys can actually create uh, custom HTML, like you know, I mean, custom UI widgets. Then when when there's really no other you know way of achieving of achieving what your site requires. Right. Okay. Yeah. So so this is this slide is the. Uh, is the uh, advice that I sort of um, I, I talked about briefly just now, which is basically use built-in um, HTML whenever possible. And you know, accordions are pretty popular, so we'll we'll see that uh, later on. But there's actually now an HTML5 element to do this. Right. So so over here. Um, so, so this is the landmarks that we touched on uh, briefly. So maybe just let me just quickly like demonstrate uh, because we, we went through this, we went through a bit of this uh, a, a while ago. So this page, I can actually move by landmark. So over here from the top, when I press um, the command to move to the next landmark, so this is a navigation, you know, uh, landmark, search landmark. So this is where I can find search items. The main landmark followed by uh, another navigation landmark. And this complementary, uh, and this complementary sort of uh, landmark is it basically means information that complements the main part of the page, but it also makes sense stand stand alone as well. And content info means uh, means um, that this is information that you find at the bottom of the page. So you can think of it as a footer. Okay. So the way that... <coughs> so the, the way that you actually um, write a landmark is that you actually say, let, let's say that you enclosed your menu bar in a div, for example. 
So one possible way to make that a landmark is to say uh, less div space, rho equals quote, nav, unquote. So that basically gets translated to um, a part of your web page with a navigation landmark. So sort of um, doing this is sort of a, is, this is a pure HTML solution. So when doing this, you um, the recommendation is to ensure that every part of your web page is within some <coughs> landmark. And so basically, like which landmark to pick is um, usually quite intuitive, like because you know you would use nav for your for your navigation bar and so forth. But the preferred solution is again to use built-in HTML5 elements. So over here, um, some HTML5 elements already have implicit roles, as um, you can see from from this table. So you know I highly recommend using these whenever, uh, whenever you you whenever possible. So next is you know implementing a custom button. So if you really really need to do this, so um the way that you will implement this is um so like in sort of in the in the next few sort of uh, sections, what I want to show you guys is um how to how sort of all of these custom widgets should sound. So that when you guys are implementing these things, you know uh, what what the so called sorry. Why yeah, you reply in two minutes? Okay. You huh? sorry what? Wrap up in the next two minutes or so. Sorry what? Wrap up in the next two minutes or so. Oh, wrap up. Yeah. Oh wait, what? Because uh, yeah, five really. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So um over here this oh yeah, so this is sort of rough, roughly how a button landmark or a custom yeah, button should sound mind. like. So this is a print page button. So it actually said print page button. And as far as I, I'm aware of just by listening to this, this is a regular button. So if I were to activate this button, it actually, it actually prints uh, as you would expect. But the way that it's actually implemented is you purely using a custom button. So first you would set your, um, so on your div that you would have for this button, you would, you would basically set row equals to button. And then let's say that your button has multiple possible states, for example, um, so this is a mute button and it said mute button toggle not pressed so the way that the, the reason that it, it knows that is it's because it has an aria dash pressed equals to true or false attribute attached to it and when i press enter on this pressed, pressed. so i know that this button is um, act, is active mm. so the way that you know you do this is just using uh, <laughs> just by using uh, scripting. And you know, this is basically what I said just now. So do I continue on? Yeah, just continue. Okay. So the, the next thing is implementing two tips. Right. So let me just give you guys an example. Right. So in this um two tip example. Right. So I'm in on this username of I'm near this username field. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press the tab key to bring my 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 focus here. And it said also known as user ID. So this is the text of the tooltip and it was and it was able to automatically uh, read it out. And the way that it's implemented is basically by there is a diff right next to this um, edit uh, box that is initially set to be hidden when the page loads. And when your, uh, when this thing receives focus, there's scripting that uh, reacts to this event, and then it basically unhides the tooltip. But then the next question you might be wondering is that how does the screen reader know that, you know, that tooltip is related to this box? So the diff is, has this row equals to, um, has this row equals to tooltip? <laughs> And over here, um, so the input sort of uh, box actually has this um, 
has this so so first is some this is just some um, you know standard CSS to hide uh, to 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 hide some elements based on the aria dash hidden uh, attribute and then after that and then after that this is the uh, H, the the uh, corresponding HTML so over here the input uh, attribute has an aria dash described by e um, equals to something and this basically means that uh, this element has some additional description that lives somewhere else and we ref and we refer to this element by its ID so this is how it knows about um, how to read the, the uh, tooltip and then after that the sort of the uh, final like thing to note is that for tooltips to work properly um, you should not only listen for on mouse over events but you should also be listening to the on focus event because the on on focus is sort of a more device ag agnostic and I believe that also works for touchscreen um, devices as well and correspondingly um, when you listen for on mouse out you should also listen for the on blur event as well a few more Why? Is this it? do you want me to stop uh, uh, just try and go okay. through okay. Okay. Yeah. Hmm? yeah sorry no they asked whether we share the slides we'll share the slides oh yes yeah, but it's actually okay. just uh, mm. okay <clears throat> So I mean, um, so over here, you know, due to we are uh, sort of running a bit sort of uh, out of uh, time. So, but over here, I'll just br really briefly describe this. So this is just an um, accordion. So oh, last one. Yeah, just do this. So um, this is so an accordion is something that you do see fairly frequently. <laughs> And over here, what it says is that button like unavailable expanded personal information. So the fact that it said expanded is also due to, to the same reason as before. It said, um, sorry, at, as a similar reason, there's an aria dash expanded equals to true or false attached to this. And next, when I have my focus on this uh, element, when I press down the down arrow key, it said billing address button collapse. So now I'm here and I know that um, this sort of header is collapsed and I can press enter to basically uh, op open it up. Yep, and then I can sort of uh, read uh, read uh, what's under here. So this is what, what I mean by accordion. So basically the trick, the, the, uh, trick to implementing the accordion is just to listen to the appropriate uh, keyboard events to make sure that when visually you hide you know the section you also say that you know that that this is uh collapse mm. to basically say area dash expanded equals false yeah so that's the trick to doing this okay so that was how, okay so how many more custom widgets are there uh, I think, I think too long okay um so guys i think we we are also cognizant of the time we we are slightly running over already uh there are, there are two more custom widgets to go through I think we won't go through them now, but it will be quite self-explanatory. We will share the slides with you, um, and then you can look through those. Um, so I think we will just wrap up uh, today. If if you could just help us with two things, I think the first one is, I think the photographer just left the room, but when he comes back, if we can take a photo together. Um, and then the second one is, if you can give us some feedback. Um, okay, hold on. If you can give us some feedback, uh, just go to this Facebook page. Um, look for. Sorry. Okay, just close this and then search this. Wait, actually, let me. Is it easier to search on Google? No, just through Facebook can really. Because okay. it's a Facebook page. Okay. Wait, actually. Oops. Can you just scan okay just give us a minute just uh, yeah just search these abilities i'm just trying to let me do it let me do it okay oh sorry can i dis disconnect from the bluetooth uh, speaker because it's a bit laggy 
Oh sih, istri. Oh, tenang. Tenang, Evie. 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 So, hold on. Okay. Uh, is it this page? Yeah. So, if you could just um, go to this Facebook page, uh, These Abilities, uh, have us like the page, um, and then uh, the, there is a link to a uh, feedback form that uh, you know we would really appreciate if you could help us fill out so that we can um, know what we can do to improve the next time round so it's an air table form uh, this one the the, the air table form <coughs> uh, so yeah if you could just help us do that before you leave as well um, uh, and then when the photographer comes back we can take a picture then we can all head to the beach is there, is there is a there beach party or sorry is it raining is it raining is it raining already? Yeah. Oh so no. Oh no. My battery stops around like seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so where where the Australian like? So um yeah, once you right. fill up the once you fill up the form, uh, you can leave your email, um and then we will uh, send you the slides from there. Hmm. Yeah. I think there's a email field. Yeah. Let me just double check. <clears throat> Uh, guys, so when you fill up the feedback form, <coughs> uh, sorry, my, my bad, I forgot to put in a, a, a few for you to put your email address. So for the last question, just type your email there. <laughs> then we will contact you from there. Yeah. 